Hello everyone, welcome back to lesson 5 of elements of mechanical engineering. So in this particular lesson, we'll further discuss few more concepts of thermodynamics and two more laws of thermodynamics. So in the lesson 4, we did discuss the basic concepts of thermodynamics and zeroth law of thermodynamics and first law of thermodynamics. So in this particular lesson, we'll discuss the third law of thermodynamics, second law and third law of thermodynamics as well as few terminologies associated with this law. So what does the second law of thermodynamics say? So as you are aware that the first law of thermodynamics actually helps us in finding the change in energy. As the first law states, energy can neither be created nor destroyed but it can be converted from one form to another form. So that is what the first law is all about. So it helps us in finding out what is the change in the energy. So, if it is being added, that will be converted into an equivalent work. So, that energy change is explained in the first law of thermodynamics. But the first law of thermodynamics, it fails to explain why only energy or heat flows from a body from of higher temperature to a body at lower temperature. That is the direction of process. So, first law, it fails to explain why it has to flow only in a direction from higher temperature body to a lower temperature body. So, that is being explained in the second law of thermodynamics. So, second law of thermodynamics, it basically establishes the direction of flow of it. Direction of flow of it. So, how it flows. Why it has to flow from hot reservoir to cold reservoir or from a body from high temperature to a body of low temperature. So basically there are two statements, one is given by Kelvin and Planck and one more statement for second uh, law of thermodynamics given by Clausius. But uh, they have been defined thermodynamically in a different forms but both statements are identical in nature. Okay, so first let us discuss what is the second law of thermodynamics according to Kelvin and Planck. So, according to the Kelvin and Planck statement of second law of thermodynamics, they say that it is impossible to construct an engine working in a cyclic process whose sole purpose is to convert heat energy from a single thermal reservoir into equivalent amount of work. So, as they say, you just see the diagram here. So, you have an hot reservoir and we have a cold reservoir. And QH is the amount of heat that is coming out of the hot reservoir. And you can just see that heat engine is the one which is extracting that heat and converting that heat into a work output. As per the statement, they say that whatever the QH amount of heat that is being supplied to the heat engine cannot be completely converted into work output without losing certain quantity of heat to the cold reservoir that's what it says that means to say it is absolutely not possible to completely convert the heat energy input into the engine into output of work so we cannot make continuously operating engine that converts all its heat energy into work without losing energy that's what is that is not possible qh equal to w is not at all possible the engine has to reject some quantity of heat to the reservoir if qh is the amount of heat that is being received by the engine and ql is the amount of heat that is being rejected so qh cannot be equal to work unless and until some quantity of heat is being lost so there is nothing which can make an engine to be 100% efficient. So then what is the actual work given to given by the engine? If QH is the amount of heat being received and QL is the amount of heat being rejected, then actual work done by the engine will be nothing but equal to QH minus QL. QL is the amount of heat that is being rejected. So, QH minus QL is the actual work that is being done by the engine. So, that's what the Kelvin Planck says. So, there cannot be an 100% efficient engine, so which can completely convert the heat received by it into an useful work. So, that, that doesn't exist in the world. So, nothing can be, no system can be 100% efficient.
efficient. So that is the give a statement given by the Kelvin and Planck. Similarly, clauses also state the second law of thermodynamics, but they are stated in a thermodynamically in a different form, but more or less it means the same. So according to Clausius statement, it says that it is impossible for a self-acting machine working in a cyclic process to transfer heat from a body at a lower temperature to a body at higher temperature without the aid of external agency. So in case of Kelvin and Planck, they said that the QH amount of heat that is being received by it cannot be completely converted into work unless and if it doesn't reject QL quantity of heat. But here it is just the reverse. So that means to say the QL to QH that means to say temperature of a body at low and temperature of the body at high. That means to say QL is the quantity of heat that is being taken out from a body at low temperature and to a body of high temperature, it cannot be transferred without the aid of external work. So, it cannot flow from a body at lower temperature to a body at higher temperature without the aid of external work. Naturally, it cannot flow. Natural process is what? Heat to flow from body at higher temperature to body at lower temperature. But if you want to pump heat from body at lower temperature to body at higher temperature, so you cannot supply heat from lower temperature uh, body to higher temperature body without the aid or without the work being done on the system. Work is done by on the system. So instead of engine, here we call it as pump. Okay. So that identically both are same statement. So without the aid of external work, you cannot pump heat from lower body temperature to higher body temperature. Okay, so identically both are same. The only alternative for the transfer of energy from lower temperature or higher temperature is you have to use some work from outside. So best example is the pump, isn't it? So using a pump, we can supply heat from a body at lower temperature to a body at higher temperature. So to explain further with second law of thermodynamics, so it says very simple. So heat from a body at higher temperature to body at lower temperature naturally it flows naturally we know that it can flow from body at higher temperature to a body at lower but naturally it cannot flow from cold body to hot body so this is natural process but this is not possible without using some external work that's what the second law of thermodynamics is Without the use of external work, you cannot pump heat from cold reservoir to hot reservoir. So then how do we define the thermal efficiency of such system or such uh, maybe an heat engine or a heat pump? If as I, we discussed QH amount of heat that is being supplied to the engine, engine does a work W and QL is the amount of heat rejected by the engine. So what is the actual work done? Actual work done W is equal to QH minus QL. So how can we measure the efficiency of such a system? So that is nothing but W divided by Q. So what is W? The work done by the system and what is Q? That is heat supplied by the or heat supplied to the system. So in that case, so what is W here? So actual work done is nothing but is equal to QH minus QL. What are the heat supplied to the system? It is QH. So efficiency is nothing but equal to 1 minus QL divided by QH. So this is the formula for efficiency if you are writing in terms of in terms of the heat being supplied from the hot reservoir or the heat being rejected to the cold reservoir okay the same efficiency or the thermal efficiency statement can be written in terms of temperature if t1 is the temperature maintained at the hot reservoir and t2 is the temperature maintained at the cold reservoir obviously efficiency can also be written in the form of temperature as 1 minus t2 
T2 by T1. See here, QL means what? Heat being rejected to the cold reservoir. So what is the temperature maintained at cold reservoir? T2. So QH is what? The heat supplied to the engine. So which the temperature at the hot reservoir is T1. So in terms of temperature, efficiency is nothing but 1 minus T2 by T1. In terms of heat supply, efficiency, that is thermal efficiency is in terms of 1 minus QL divided by QH. So that is all about second law of thermodynamics. So what does the third law of thermodynamics deals with? So third law of thermodynamics basically deals with entropy of a system. So third law of thermodynamics it states that the entropy of a pure substance in a thermodynamic equilibrium approaches zero as the temperature approaches zero. So that means to say entropy of a pure system in a thermodynamic equilibrium approaches zero that mean to say limit temperature equal to zero so entropy s yes, will be approaching zero as the temperature approaches absolute zero entropy of a system will also be equal to zero so what does this entropy says so you know that as the temperature decreases as the temperature decreases what happens the internal energy of the system also decreases. As the internal energy de decreases, obviously the kinetic energy of the system or the kinetic energy of the fluid within the body also decreases. Isn't it? As the temperature approaches zero, obviously the kinetic energy will also be equivalent to zero. Isn't it? As the temperature increases, the kinetic energy of the body also increases so entropy is nothing but the heat content within the body or within the atoms and molecules so as the temperature approaches zero what does it mean obviously there is no kinetic energy or there is no gain in the kinetic energy of the molecules so obviously the molecules will also attain zero kinetic energy so entropy it deals with the internal uh, it deals with the energy content in the atoms and the molecules and the third law of thermodynamic it clearly says that the entropy of a pure substance so this law is applicable to pure substance but not for all other substance so entropy of a pure substance in a thermodynamic equilibrium system it will be equal to zero as the temperature approaches absolute zero absolute means zero means in terms of kelvin in terms of degree centigrade, it has to reach minus 273.15 degree centigrade. At that state, the kinetic energy will be equal to zero. So that is what the third law of thermodynamics is all about. So let us discuss few more terminologies associated with thermodynamics. So one important thing is the internal energy which we have been, which we are discussed in the during first law of thermodynamics so what do you mean by internal energy so internal energy is nothing but the total of the random internal kinetic energies of the atom atoms and the total internal potential energies due to the bonds between the atoms so in other words, so you can simply say that the total energy possessed by a body or a system due to the molecular arrangement and the motion of the system. It is nothing but equal to what? All kinetic energy plus all potential energy possessed by the molecules in a system. That is what we call it as an internal energy. Internal energy means that is possessed within the body. That is possessed within the body. So these molecules, they will be moving from one point to another point within a system. So, due to the kinetic energy, it moves with the, from one point to another point. And within the molecule or within the atom itself, it possesses some energy which we call it as potential energy. So, those atoms which are at rest, so they also possess an energy which we call it as potential energy. Those atoms which move from one point to another point within the body will also possess an energy. Because of that energy only it is moving. So, what is the energy during movement is nothing but the kinetic energy. So, the total internal energy possessed by a body or a system is nothing but sum of the total of all the kinetic energy plus the total of all the potential energy of the particles or the atoms that forms the system. So, this internal energy is normally denoted by U and is expressed in terms of Joule. 
and is expressed in terms of joule so what do you mean by that internal energy so you can just see that as i said there are number of molecules or the atoms which might be a part of the system here a body or a system so as it moves from one point to another point it possesses kinetic energy and during at rest within that molecules it has got some potential energy so internal energy is nothing but the total of all the kinetic energy possessed by this molecules plus the total of all the potential energy that is possessed by these molecules so molecular motion is a primary function of temperature and internal energy is also sometimes called as thermal energy so this uh, internal energy basically it exhibits two important properties one it is the state function and it scales it as an extensive property so for example you consider a unit mass of gas that possesses an internal energy u the gas internal energy depends on its temperature isn't it so as the temperature increases as the temperature increases the density decreases as the density decreases the volume increases as the volume increases the pressure decreases that means to say as the volume increases there will be movement of molecules or the atoms from one place to another place why or why does it move because you are adding the heat due to the heat being added to the system these molecules get energized itself and it starts moving from one point to another point so during stay it it will store energy in the form of potential energy and during the motion it will be moving in the form of an kinetic energy so total internal energy is nothing but the addition of these two energies kinetic energy plus potential energy so one more term is the enthalpy so what do you mean by enthalpy enthalpy is nothing but the total heat content of a system so total heat content of the system is nothing but what whatever the heat we supply to the system a part of the heat is being consumed by the system itself because as i said that's nothing but our internal energy u isn't it it is nothing but our internal energy so what whenever we supply an heat to a system first it has to absorb the heat what the system so when the system absorbs obviously those molecules within the system will absorb heat it stores the energy which we call it as potential energy and that energizes itself which we call it as kinetic energy so kinetic energy plus potential energy is the internal energy of the molecules present within the system so once it gets saturated then it starts doing the work work is what pressure into volume is our work okay so what is the total heat content of the system so internal energy that is nothing but u that is the energy stored by the molecules plus the work done by the molecules that is nothing but the work done by that particular system so enthalpy is nothing but the total heat content internal energy is nothing but the heat possessed within the body or within the system so first it energizes itself consuming some energy that is internal energy u and then it does a work and that work is nothing but the product of pressure and volume of a system so as it says here according to the german scientist or molier initial enthalpy was called heat content actually initial enthalpy was called say as the heat increases obviously what happens the enthalpy has to increase if heat is being taken out of a system obviously enthalpy decreases isn't it if heat is added into the system so still the molecules become saturated internal energy so once beyond that internal energy that energy is being utilized to do a work so that means to say the enthalpy increases so if you take out the heat from the particular system obviously work done on the system diminishes the work internal energy also and thereby the enthalpy also decreases so one more important term is the entropy so as we have already discussed this entropy in, in terms of third law of thermodynamics what does this entropy is all about so entropy actually it represents the disorder of uncertainty at microscopic level even at it is used as a property at the macroscopic level entropy it actually represents the disorder of uncertainty at microscopic level so what are the disorder so basically uh, it is the measurement 
of thermal energy per unit temperature so that means to say if i add one unit of temperature to a system what is the increase in the energy content in that particular atom or in that particular molecule so that is what we call it as entropy so per degree raise in the temperature what is the quantity of heat that increases within the molecules is the measure of entropy so it is also a measure of amount of molecular disorder within a system within a system for example if uh, the amount of heat that flows into the system or into a, into the system from the larger reservoir at higher temperature at an absolute zero temperature so what will be the increase in entropy so entropy is denoted by delta s so what is the change in the entropy is given by change in the heat content of those molecules when there is a change in the temperature the change in the entropy of a system during a process can be determined by integral of all those things that means to say how does it change so it can be denoted by the cyclic integral as the temperature changes from point 1 to point 2 so entropy of a system is normally given by what is the heat content what is the change in the heat so what is the kilojoules of heat that changes when there is a change in the temperature t so normal unit of this entropy is what is the kilojoules per kelvin if i take what is the change in the heat per unit mass per unit mass of the content so then it will be kilojoules per kg kelvin so that is how we do not denote the entropy so entropy is specified for every equilibrium state of a pure substance so entropy is also mainly a function of temperature so in 1865 rudolf clausius first introduced the term entropy as i said change the entropy is denoted by ds which is nothing but what is the change in the heat content so q1 was the initial heat before adding before rising the temperature from some temperature to some other temperature after increasing the temperature from t1 to t2 so energy content also increases from q1 to q2 so q1 minus q2 is dq so that is a change in the heat content in the molecule of a system per per unit change in the temperature so that is what we call it as the change in the entropy system so using this first law of second law of thermodynamics so we can solve few numericals on that so list of formula that are used from the first law of thermodynamic system as you are aware that for cyclic process so cyclic integral of change in heat is equal to cyclic integral of change in work so what is the change in the internal energy we did discuss this in the first law of thermodynamics change in internal energy energy is nothing but the heat supplied to the system minus work done by the system so you know that so q cannot be completely converted into work so few amount of heat is being rejected according to the second law of thermodynamics so that is nothing but the internal energy okay so internal change in the internal energy is nothing but given by q minus w according to second law of thermodynamics so we will be able to find what is the thermal efficiency of the system so thermal efficiency as i already discussed it is nothing but the work output divided by the heat input into the system so this can be given by q input minus q output divided by q input or in terms of temperature we did discuss this already so this is nothing but equal to qh minus ql divided by qh so in terms of temperature t1 minus t2 divided by t1 so these are the formula from first law of thermodynamics and second law of thermodynamics which we use and to solve few numericals so in this particular lesson we did learn about the second law of thermodynamics the third law of thermodynamics as well as certain terminologies associated with thermodynamics namely internal energy enthalpy entropy and list of formulas especially from first law and second law of thermodynamics so using these formulas we'll try to solve few numericals in the next lesson so hope to see you again in the next lesson thank you